Sanchez. Here's Siddle. Oh, the ball is close. He's given it in. He's given it in. Peter Siddle's got a hat trick on his birthday. Welcome back to the On The Ball podcast. This is episode 74 of the show. I'm once again joined by Pilch. How are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, we kind of did it last week, so it's not really the first episode, is it? But we're going to be starting a weekly NFL episode where we chat all things NFL, pretty much. I think I've been thinking of, like, I've not been struggling, but I've just been, when I just brainstorm my weekly episodes, I've I try and stick to the sports that I'm into at the time because I don't really want to just be like a pretender and talk about something I don't care about. And week on week, it was kind of just NFL was like the main interest, but I didn't want to just put out NFL. And then I just thought, no, stuff it. Let's do a weekly NFL thing because that's what we talk about most days anyway after, um, well, in this at this time of year. So I thought we may as well make most of that and have a weekly chat about it. So it's probably going to be the Thursday episode most weeks but it might be the Saturday episode like it is this time um, on occasion um, so just ignore that we don't mention the the Bucks or the Bears this week because that's already happened this morning what what were your thoughts on that game though? Uh, yeah we were chatting about it before and both agree that it was just filthy that the Bears got up in that one um, the home ground advantage probably got them over the line but they're probably the worst four and one team that I've ever seen, even though I've only followed the sport for two years. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing it. The, the defense is doing pretty well, a bit like two years ago or whatever it was. Khalil Mack looks back to his best. He was Brady getting seriously under Brady's skin today. I think there was a time where Brady kind of stood up after he sacked him and licked him off a bit. But it was a bit <laughs> awkward because he had just sacked him. But, yeah, Brady was kind of losing his cool, which is um, unusual to see. And, yeah, I don't know. I think the Bucks. I'm not surprised, but I think Tom Brady might be a little bit struggling to get adapt to how long it's going to take to be- become a smooth moving offense. And like before, they're putting up you know 40 points a week, but I think that point will come. Um, they still haven't really had all three receivers on the well, mainly two, but um, Scotty Mills playing pretty well as well. But they haven't really had the full receiving core out there yet at once. So I don't think there's much to worry about with the Bucks personally, but. Yeah, the Bears, they like they could just bullshit their way through it and, yep. and find themselves in a wild card spot, but who knows. Um, all right, so we're going to be reviewing the the fourth week of the NFL season and we won't not much of a preview, but we'll talk a little bit about week the upcoming week five. But yeah, more of a review episode this weekly chat will be. Um, let's start with match of the week, mate. Obviously, yep, we can't week. we can't watch too much because of time zones and stuff. And a lot of the games are at the same time at about four AM here. But which match did you did, would you think is match of the week? Yeah, well, as you said, the time zones make it pretty tough. And in week four, it kind of seemed like all the prime time games were pretty like pretty boring games or just low quality sides. So I went for the um, I did go for a for a low quality side uh, side game but it was a tightly contested one and it was the Bengals v Jaguars. Um, Yeah, there are a few high-scoring games to pick from, but I think this game, from what it looked, was an exciting game and Joe Burrow's first win as a starting NFL quarterback, which is exciting for him as well. And I uh, I think the Bengals are better than what a lot of people are thinking at the moment and they'll only get better. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think similar to Miami last year, um, I think they might trouble some teams in the last month when they've really, like the Miami yeah. beat the Patriots in the last week or something of last year's regular season. And, you know, they could sneak up to five or six wins without people really realising. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. I think they're doing a pretty good job at Cincinnati. Um, mine was, this is, it's not like a good match of the week, but it was just a fascinating game to watch. Philadelphia and the 49ers. Um, what was it? Was it Sunday night footy, I think? I think it was. Um, but yeah. the Eagles came home winners 25-20, to 20, but it was a pretty low-quality match. But the thing that I enjoyed, it was just back and forward because there were so many turnovers. Um, there was three interceptions across the two sides and three fumbles. So the ball was just um, ping pong, ping-ponging from side to side. And... Although that you probably prefer to watch a 50-all shootout like we did um, 
oh, who was playing that game? I think it was like the Bucks and the Saints last year um, or the 49ers and the Saints or something. But sometimes when the ball is just going back and forward and the defences are kind of putting on a clinic and the offences are struggling, it's also entertaining. Um, and then Mullins got benched. Kittle had 15 rece- receptions. I think there was just a lot in it. A lot in it, and it ended with a Carson Wentz game-winning drive. Um, so yeah, I think it wasn't the highest quality match, probably the same as yours. But um, yeah, I just think it was pretty close. A bit of a shock as well, and yeah, it was just an entertaining watch. Yeah, I must admit that game was very eventful. It was um, back uh, very back and forth. Both offenses looked very not good at all, but. I mean, it was it was an entertaining game to watch. I'm worried yeah. about Carson Wentz though. Very worried. Yeah, no, he misses a lot of a lot of open throws. Um, they still has, have so many injuries. The Eagles. I don't really know what happens um, in True. Philadelphia, but well, actually, um, both those teams pretty much had half their starting yeah. lineups out. To be fair, yeah, it probably did affect the quality. I think if it was full strength, it would have been quite a good game. But um, yeah. It doesn't really matter who you're throwing to if you're missing them by like three meters. Um, yeah. It's down to the quarterback, isn't it? Um, all right. And so moving into, so we, we've got a few like different segments to this show. We'll just see how it goes for the first week, and I'm sure we'll um, fine tune it um, in the coming weeks. But most impressive victory. Um, who are you most impressed by, mate? Yeah. Well, for me, it was the Cleveland Browns. Um, yeah. I didn't really know what to expect going into this one. Kind of, kind of thought both teams sucked, but. Well, the fact that they they, 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 <laughs> they still do suck, but the Browns are three and one, which is yeah, I know quite I fascinating know. actually. Yeah. And they actually like their offense looked really good, which is I mean they could be they could be decent, and yeah, uh, but the Cowboys' defense is just shocking, like yeah. worst in the NFL easily. Yeah, they this was actually my most disappointing loss. Um, I just think. People were saying that they were like Super Bowl contenders going into it. And like, I don't want to be that bloke in hindsight, but I I was kind of laughing at the calls because I thought it was pretty outrageous because it was just so glaring how bad their defense was going to be. Um, So maybe I was thinking like, oh, maybe there's a few guys we don't really know who they have big raps on, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. They've just gone with the tactic of let's just try and score 40 a week, which they are kind of doing to be fair to them, but um, they're conceding more. So... Um, yeah, it's not going good. They're one and three. Um, but yeah, the Browns really impressive. Nick Chubb is injured though. Do, what did he do? Yeah. Was MCL or something? Yeah, MCL strain. I think it'll be around a month. Um, yeah, maybe more. Yeah. Um. So that's not ideal. But I'm sure, um, Kareem Hunt will in, will not enjoy it. But I'm sure he won't mind that absence. I'm sure his workload will increase. Um. But yeah, that was a very interesting game. I couldn't really believe that score when I woke up. I after seeing what the Browns put up against the Bengals a few weeks earlier, I was surprised that the Browns could put up forty nine. But um, yeah, I I do think that's definitely an impressive victory and a disappointing loss simultaneously. Yep. Um, by the way, as I was just talking about Cream Hunt, it made me think we are going to be talking a little bit about fantasy as well on this podcast a bit later on, but we'll start with the NFL section and then we'll go into the fantasy because we do love our fantasy. Um, my most impressive victory was the Panthers beating the Cardinals. Um, probably another one that could go either way. could be yeah. most disappointing loss or most impressive victory, which is probably um, understandable. It's probably a bit weird to have these two categories now I think about it, but um, Panthers were predicted to be one of the worst teams in the NFL um, we talked about it in our predictions. We were joking about how bad their defense is going to be, which it actually hasn't been too bad. Um, but more their offense has been insane. Um, well, not insane, but very impressive. Bridgewater, I think, has overperformed what people were expecting from him. And Robbie Anderson has kind of come in and taken over. DJ Moore's taken a bit of a backseat. And Robbie Anderson is producing even better numbers than he was at the Jets. Um, when he was by by far and away the best, um, the main man there, which is quite surprising and quite a stacked receiving court, the Panthers, um, but also the run game. Um, McCaffrey's gone their main weapon, but Reggie Bonifon and is it Mike Davis? Is yeah, Mike Davis. Yeah, yeah, they 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 were really impressive on the weekend. Both averaged more than five runs per carry. So, um, Panthers they're doing a lot of things right there, and they're now two and two. So probably one of the most surprising. And I think one of their losses was a four-point loss to the Raiders. So I'm um, definitely surprised with how well they're doing. 
Yeah, they're they're doing very well. I couldn't believe that result either when I woke up. That's actually my um, most disappointing loss from the Cardinals' point of view. Not really sure what's going on with them since week two. But yeah, um, yeah, Panthers look good. Teddy looks very good. Yeah. Do you have any other any other um, matches in these sections? Uh, that was my main disappointing loss, but I also wrote down the 49ers, which we yeah. talked about before. Um, a lot of their players are out, but they probably they've probably should be winning that match if they want to. They're honestly they might be in danger of not even making the playoffs at this point. Yeah, they should, so. but yeah, my worry is with their defense because like they have injuries on offense, but. Even last year, like offense, they still scored quite a lot of points, but it was more just because the defense would stop every everything that the other team would try. And um, Bose is out, Solomon Tom- Thomas is out, um, Richard Sherman's out, yep. and you can really see it. Um, the Eagles put up twenty five against them and played pretty bad. So, um, yeah, I'm actually pretty worried about the Forty Niners. Um, and yeah, my other one was probably the Texans losing to the Vikings. Um, not that they were expected to win or lose. It was a pretty 50-51 going into it, but it was a do-or-die game for both teams. I think they're completely out of finals now or playoffs. Um, 0-4 and the Vikings were in pretty horrible form going into it and we saw Bill O'Brien get sacked, which I'm kind of happy about, but I'm also a bit annoyed that it didn't happen a little bit earlier. Like I know they were had decent results a few years ago, so it's hard to sack them then, but... Um, I just didn't really rate the setup of him being both GM and head coach. I don't think that dynamic really works. And it's kind of sad that he almost ruined the team a little bit in the last 18 months with some of his trade work, trading um, two first-round picks for an O-lineman and then trading away their best player, well, next to Deshaun Watson in DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, um, that's a yeah. shocker. Yeah, pretty frust- it would be pretty frustrating as a Texans fan because it would almost just be like, well, if we'd sacked him 18 months ago, that you'd have your two round first round picks and um, John Joe Hopkins. But anyway, um, they, they don't have to rebuild. They've got their star quarterback, um, but they've just got to build around him now um, and probably look to the future because um, I don't think, well, playoffs are 100% out of contention this year and I don't yeah. think they're looking too likely in the future, near future either. Um, so that was pretty poor from the Texans. Um, things we learnt from week four. What what do you want to start us off with, mate? Oh, uh, yeah. So I've got three things here. Um, firstly, I already touched on it, but the Cleveland Browns actually look good is what I wrote down because after week one, um, you know, in the media it was like, they could go 0-16 after that huge loss to the Ravens. But they've won three on the trot now and they've just beaten the Cowboys. And their offense looks really good, in my opinion. So, I don't know. I think they could be a decent team this season. All right. So, sports bet or, I don't know, a betting company gives you a bonus bet of 10 bucks. It's a 50-50, <laughs> $1.91 either side. Browns and eight playoffs, yes or no? What what side are you putting your bonus oh. bet on, mate? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go no, just because they're gonna have four losses most likely due to the divisional uh, matchups. True, yeah. But yeah, if it was if it was even odds, I'd probably lean on no. Yeah, cool. it, it's definitely line ball. Um, well, the Texans are gone. That's one of the main wild card um, candidates true. you'd say. But the Patriots, you'd say they're a lock for a wild card, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, then it's probably a showdown between, well, whoever loses out of the Steelers and the Ravens, that's a wild card there. So then for the final one, it would be out of the Titans, Raiders, and them, I'd say. And I'd what probably a, say. What about Indy? I think they're winning that division. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. I re- well, whoever loses that division out of the Titans and the yeah, Colts. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I'd probably say they are the least favorite out of that race, but they're definitely going to be right up there. And it's a, been a great start for them. Yep. Uh, big game this week. Might talk about it a little bit later, but they're versing Indi- Indianapolis, so that might have yep. playoff implications for them already, even though it's week five. Um, my I'm first in point, Cleveland as well, so oh, yeah, they've got a good shot at it. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, my first thing is the Patriots' defense is still one of the best in the league. Um, they did yeah. lose to the Chiefs, and in the end it was a 16-point loss, which looks quite comprehensive, but... They kept the Chiefs' offense to two touchdowns, which is pretty incredible given how hot they've been recently. 
And this is off the back of two players from their starting defense last year going to Detroit. Carl Van Noy went to Miami and two starters opted out because of COVID. Um, and Stefan Gilmore is, as you were telling me uh, yesterday, has like this disgusting PFF rating and um, yep. is being pretty, pretty slammed by everyone in the media, but they're still somehow getting it done. Um, probably just shows how good of a coaching setup they have um, yep. that they can pretty much just slot anyone into that defensive setup and it works well. Um, but did you see Gilmore got COVID? Yeah, there's all that, all that stuff about him um, hugging Mahomes or whatever after the match. Oh, really? And then he, and then he uh, tested positive the next day. So, yeah. If if uh, if Mahomes tests positive, that'll be fairly big to say the least. Yeah, I can't lie. I'm. It's getting a little bit scary now. Yeah, um, genuine. There's quite a few like teams now who are getting a few positive tests, and you can only postpone games for so long before. Um, well, like now with the the Titans Bills game being postponed to Tuesday in America, Wednesday for us. Um, that's seen another game from the next week gets postponed, and you can't do that for too long. Like you can't be postponing games like a month in advance and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently Tennessee were like they broke a lot of rules with what they did. So um, hopefully they get in some trouble for that because um, that's pretty yeah. rubbish from them. Can't be can't be putting the season in danger like that. Yeah, exactly. What's your next point, mate? My next point is the Cardinals um, are a lot further back than what we thought after two weeks. Two very, very poor losses to um, the Lions and the Panthers. I don't know. I don't know if it's their offense or defense. I think their, I think their offense isn't as good as people thought. Kyler Murray hasn't actually been that good through the air. I know he's rushed for 90 yards every week, but... There was, I think, against the Lions, he threw three picks. And then last week, he only had like 130 passing yards. Yeah, he and had then, three touchdowns, 130 yeah, passing yards. Yeah, it's a joke. Yards. That's like Lamar last season. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, and then their backfield as well doesn't look great. Um, I don't know what's going on with Kenyon Drake. But Hopkins Hopkins seems to be carrying their offense at the moment. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think about them now. Yeah, they're, they're a tough one to read. And now that we've seen the 49ers form, and I know they didn't have injuries week one, but that win week after week is slowly starting to look less impressive as well. So Yeah, true. Yeah, it's looking good. And that leads into my second point. And I'm, look, I don't know if I 100% believe this, but I think we've had a changing at the mantle of best division in the NFL. I think the AFC North has overtaken the NFC West, if not have become neck and neck, and the next few weeks will decide it. But last week we had the 49ers lose to the Eagles, who were winless before that match. We had the Cardinals lose to the Panthers, who, as I mentioned before, were tipped to be one of the worst teams in the comp. We had the Browns beat the Cowboys, who were tipped to be Super Bowl contenders. (laughs) The Ravens have only lost to the Chiefs, and Steelers are undefeated. Bengals picked up their first win to go one, two, and one. So, yeah, I, I, think, agree, I agree. I think it's definitely tight, but I, right now I'd probably just give the AFC North the nod. But yeah, it's very close. But I think the NFC West week after week they're sl- slowly retracting, and also the Seahawks only beat Miami by I think seven points or something. So that probably, um, you know, diminishes their talent as well. But no denying they're both. Um, quality divisions, but I do think week after week the AFC North is slowly catching them. Um, and I don't know why I kind of just froth the division versus division concept. <laughs> would, who would you Actually go? Interesting. Yeah, I was I was looking at that as well, and I think the AFC um, North has the better win percentage now, which is oh, okay. interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a close one because the Bengals kind of kind of let it down a bit. But, yeah, that is true. But with the Cardinals' recent form, true, true, <laughs> there probably t- might not be too much between them. But like um, the top two in that one are definitely better than the top two in the other one in the, yeah. in the NFC. I don't even know who the third division would be. I, were you saying before it's the um, the NFC North? Yeah, you, they're yeah, they're actually starting to. Oh, you were up saying of the um, NFC South. That's what we were saying. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah, that's probably um, they're probably the two contenders for third. There's also um, the the um the Chiefs Raiders Chargers. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know about that one though. It's that's a weird one. The Chiefs carry it, but 
Yeah, it's hard to rate those other three teams, but I think the Raiders have been pretty impressive. Yeah. That I, that was one of – I wrote down like eight things for this segment, but I had to cut out a few. Like the Raiders being – they're pretty legit. Yeah. Uh, they look pretty good. Um, what's your third and final point? Third and final point is Dak Prescott is currently on track for over 6,500 passing yards this season. And – to beat Peyton Manning's record, he only needs to throw 300 per game from now, which in my eyes is pretty much a lock. Like the way he's going. And the thing is, it's all junk time. Like every week they've, they're down 20 at half time, and he just has 60 passing attempts. But I mean, it is quite incredible in my opinion. Yeah, he's doing. Do, you reckon, do you reckon he'll benefit if they keep being losing? <laughs> yeah, that's that's that is how he will benefit, and it's kind of looking like they will lose a lot of weeks, or at least concede a lot of points on defense. Yeah, that's an interesting one to keep. Now, I think a lot of traditionalists will be hoping he doesn't get up because yeah, because he's clearly uh, not as good a quarterback. Yeah, and uh, like on a team that's disappointing, that would be. I don't think people would be happy with that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, my final point is that this is. 100% Matt, Patric- Matt Patricia's last year is Detroit Lions head coach. Um, the bubbles finally popped, brother. Um, the board came out and said last year that he has to make the playoffs um, for him to stay in the job. They're That's one and three. Stiff, just it it is pretty stiff. stiff, especially in that division. Like for them to think he's going to jump from fourth and like realistically to be in the wild card, you probably have to come second. So it was, yeah, it's pretty, pretty stiff, but um. Yeah, one one and three at the moment. And on the weekend, I think if they had any hope of making the playoffs, it was a must win against a, a, a highly touted Saints team preseason. I predicted them to win the Super Bowl. But at the moment, you know, they lost to um, the Raiders pretty comprehensively, got smacked by the Packers. So this is probably as vulnerable as, of a Saints team you'll ever get. And they just um, got pipped to the post. And yet, I don't think... I don't see them making the playoffs from here, to be honest, because um, I'm still pretty confident that they're in the bottom half of the NFC. Yep. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, Matt Patricia, if the board sticks to their word, he will be done by the end of the year. But there's actually quite a few coaches, I think, who are in trouble. Um, Dan Quinn of Atlanta. Yeah, Adam Gates. In big, yeah, they're all in big trouble. That They were talking about it. If you, I was listening to a podcast today. If so, if the Jets coach gets sacked, Falcons coach gets sacked, Detroit coach gets sacked, and the Texans jobs open, which one would you like to take? Ah, uh, definitely not Adam Gase of the Jets. Yeah, that's he's, that's the worst. Game. He's woeful. And to be honest, um, I've been doing a bit of research on Dan Quinn, and apparently he was just carried by how good that Seahawks defense was. I think he was defensive coordinator for the yeah. Seahawks. Well, Pete Carroll's basically just a defensive coordinator anyway, so yeah. he probably didn't do much. So. But, uh, I think he just got hyped up from that. And yeah, So what, do- what job would you take if you had to? So I'd probably go get sign up Patricia out of those three coaches. Is that what you're asking? If you're No, nah, like if they were all vacant and that they, they all came to you, the clubs, oh. what, which one are you taking? Which one has like the most promise? I'd probably go the Texans just because of the Texans quarterback. Texans or Lions? As long as there's no, no yeah, Lions is pressure actually, from the Lions. Yeah, Lions is actually interesting. Just not the but, Jets. Anything but the Jets to me. For me, probably just because Deshaun Watson is still pretty young. That's probably what I'd go for. And I'd probably just bottom out and build the rest of the team. Yeah, um, Stafford deserves uh, a playoffs a playoffs run before he retires. Yeah, I, reckon, I reckon they're starting to get like quite a decent list together and they could be good in a couple of years, but who knows? Yeah. Um, well, that's it. Do you have anything else to add for that section? No, nah, that's all I got. All I got. We're, we're pacing well here. I'm, I'm proud of us. I thought we were going to take ages. Um, all right, now we're on to the players section. So this is going to be predominantly fantasy talk, but obviously it ties in with real life. Um, first of all, though, um, so we're going to just be touching on um, the offensive positions today. Um, in the future, we might talk a little bit about defensive positions because I am doing my – you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 votes each week for every position. So I've got a little bit to chat about for the defense, but I'm not doing it this week because I'm not quite up to date. But QB of the week, who are you going with? It, this is in real life terms, by the way. Real life, okay. yeah. I, although he didn't get up, I had to go with Dak Prescott because yeah. like, 
he pretty much carried his off his entire team actually, not just the offense, and threw for over five hundred yards, three touchdowns, three two point conversions, and then I think one pick at the end, which was Amari Cooper's fault, not his. But yeah, he he balled out. Yeah, the guy. This is probably a shock to many if you just look at stats, but the guy who picked up my ten votes for best quarterback of week four was actually Kirk Cousins. Um, he only had 16 completions because he only had like 22 attempts or something. So he's not going to have ridiculous yardage, but 260 yards from 16 completions. Um, we've kind of come to expect that from him because of all the play action. Um, but he completed it over 70%. This was his first match of the season with no turnovers. Congratulations, Kirk. <laughs> it's about time. Um, but more importantly, he led his team to their first win of the season in a must-win match if they have any chance of making the playoffs again this year. Against, Even though Houston ha- were going in undefeated as well, I don't think Houston's that bad. So I think that was a pretty solid win. Um, so, yeah, yes. for me, Kirk Cousins was QB of the week. And if you don't mind, I'll just quickly say my top five. Um, this is my QB ranking so far this year. Big Russ Wilson, 29 votes up top. Then A-Rod sitting on 25. You'll be happy to hear. And I've got a three-way tie for third place. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and Kirk Cousins sitting on 17. So it's a bit of a two-horse race at the moment. Two-horse race at the moment. But, um, yeah, Justin Herbert also picked up eight votes on the weekend. So Yeah, he looks, out, he looks very him. good. Yeah, watch out for him climbing up that ladder. Um, but QB rises and fallers. So we're going to talk about... Fantasy related, um, so the QBs who have risen in your rankings and the QBs who have fallen in your rankings due to their week four performance or something that's occurred this week, such as injuries or, I don't know, um, workloads. Um, so who's your QB riser? Who do you think has soared up the QB ranking boards? Well, I, I don't know about soared because he was already quite high and he's been rising every week, but Aaron Rodgers... Just continues to impress. He was playing the Falcons, who are a shocking defense, but Adams was out. Alan Lazard was out. He was throwing to blokes who there's no way he knows their name. Just random. Whoever he sees, he throws it to and he connects. And he put up 300 yards, four touchdowns. And the bloke just looks invincible so far this year. And I reckon he's a lock for, he's a lock to finish as a top eight quarterback in fantasy. Yeah, he looks like I don't know him on on a personal level, and I don't know that. Like, I haven't watched him for ten years or fifteen years, like a lot of people have. But he looks to be enjoying it a lot more this year. Yeah. Um, last year there was a lot of times where he'd kind of just trudge off the field. He'd be looking a bit sad, a little bit angry, frustrated. Um, but this year he's laughing. He's getting around the t- mythical tight ends that he, as you said, doesn't know their names. He's celebrating into the camera. Yeah, that celebration um, that you posted on Twitter, that got me. Yeah, like he he's, he just seems to be loving it a bit more. I think him, the Matt LaFleur offense is working a lot better in year two. And yeah, he's killing it. Where Do you have ongoing rankings or not just kind of loose uh, in your head? Not really, like, yeah, loose, loose. How, but, how high do you have him? Is he top five or? Not top five. I, I feel like this season there's just so many quarterbacks that are just balling yeah. out so it's yeah, pretty hard to be up there I pretty but... much picked the only option that hasn't balled out in Drew Brees <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one, that's a bit stiff but um yeah he's definitely top eight I would say yeah definitely um I, I'd have him above Deshaun Watson at this point yeah no that is very true um and yeah as you said if he if he's throwing to myths and putting up those figures like when Adams is back is is Lazard out for the rest of the year what's I saw he's on actually IR. Oh, I don't no, think no. He, I don't think he's out for the year, but I'll I'll double. Yeah, I've got no idea. I just saw he's now. I just saw he's on IR. I'll go into my my guys. You search yeah. that up. I've got Justin Herbert, um, yeah. put up twenty three fantasy points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are famously a pretty good defense. Um, and he got confirmed as starter from Anthony Lynn moving You'd forward. Love to see that. Um, unfortunately, Tyrod. He, I feel bad for him. He's had a pretty unlucky career. He got benched like week two at, in Cleveland in 2018 by ba- from Baker, like Baker overtook it. And now he would, probably would have been starter for most of this year if it wasn't for an injury. So I do feel a little bit bad for him. Um, but Herbert has taken his opportunity and has not looked back. 
Um, he's played at three of the top five defenses against QBs in terms of fantasy points in the Chiefs, Panthers, and Bucks, and he's averaging 20. Um, he's also had a fumble and three interceptions. So it's not like he's just had his three best games and then he's going to have a few stinkers. He's throwing turnovers and stuff and he's still averaging 20. So imagine when he, he kind of finds form and stops throwing interceptions. Like he could be putting up 25s plus. Yep. Um, he's also rushing it four times a match, which isn't insane, but you know that always helps the points if he's putting up 20 yards a game or something like that. Just that extra cheeky two also shows that he's probably – um, happy to rush in a few TDs if he doesn't mind. Um, and also the game the game script will always suit him. Um, then probably one of the weaker teams in the NFL this year. They're not the worst, but I think they will be behind in most matches. So, And also Eckler's injury um, probably means they're going to start throwing it more. Um, and yeah, in the next month, they've got the Saints, Dolphins and Jags who have all been pretty bad defensively. Um, yeah, so great fixture. I think he is soared in rankings yes this, this week um absolutely insane bit of info from me there i'm i might trade i might trade lamar for him i might do it yeah um, I, he's he's definitely the biggest riser this week he looks like the genuine real deal like up there with joe burrow so far this season which is yeah, quite could, impressive could it could even look better if i'm honest yeah, given like given the weapons the herbert's dealing with well they're not that bad my um keen now and mike williams but keenan has um, been balling actually yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's impressed me. Um, QB falls, so someone who's dropped down your rankings. We we had a bit of trouble with this one. Yep. Um, because there's quite a few guys who got dropped or benched this week, so we don't really want to mention them. Yep. Um, but then there's also a few guys injured, and there's a few people who have done bad, but their fixture gets easier this week. So it's kind of tough to pinpoint a few, but we have had a crack. Who who's your main QB faller? Yep. So barring those uh, obvious guys, I went to Sean Watson. Um, he he put up 20 points, but he's just considering what we all thought him to be at the start of the season, you'd probably have wanted more than 20 against the Vikings. But, I mean, he's lost Hopkins, which is just huge. Like, it's having a it's having an even bigger toll than what we would have thought, I reckon. And, yeah. and his rushing numbers, for some reason, have been a lot more down this season. Not really sure why that is, but... um. Yeah, I'd definitely be worried if I had him in fantasy. Yeah, Adam definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. There's also uncertainty around the coaching job there. Like yep. they've just got an interim coach at the moment, so don't really know if he's just going to pick up the same playbook that Bill O'Brien left, or he's going to try something, some of his own moves. But um, uncertainty is something we never really like in fantasy, do we? Um, when yep. especially at the QB position, when there's so many options, you don't really want to be taking risks. Um, so, yeah, he's definitely on the low end of that. Um, I've got Jared Goff. Um, he put up 11.7 against the Giants. Um, it has to be said, the Giants' defense actually has been pretty decent this year. Yep. Um, but you still would be expecting more than 11.7 and ultimately more than 17 points from the Rams in general. Um, and then next up, they've got Washington in Washington and then they've got the 49ers and the Bears and um that's tough what the washington defense has been pretty good this year and then in recent seasons well this year the bears defense has been good and then the 49ers if they can get back to their defensive best um it's not looking too great for goffy um so yeah i would be passing up on him or if i had him in my side i'd be looking to trade him away maybe um yeah would would you cop i don't think anyone would cop a goff for herbert anyway but <laughs> You might have missed the train on that one if you've got Goff and um, you're looking for Herbert, but um, yeah, yeah, I'd be potentially I'd be offloading Goff in the short term unless yeah. you're just looking for long term. Yeah. If you're own four like myself, I'd be looking to offload him. Um, but yeah, running running back on the of the week, who are you going with here? I don't think this is really a question. Yeah, this there's a lot more choices in the skill positions. I've gone Kareem Hunt. Uh, pretty much just due to Nick Chubb's injury. But, I mean, considering their offense, Stefanski, all he does is run the ball. And Hunt's going to become that running back one now and probably keep most of his passing work as well. Didn't have a reception on the weekend, but I think Baker only had about 25 attempts. They were just taking the piss on the ground, getting about 10 yards per attempt, and he scored two touchdowns. But um, as long as Chubb's out, I'd say he's a lock for 
that top six kind of tier. Yeah, um, definitely a good one. I was I haven't really looked too much at fantasy this week, but as soon as I heard Chubb was out, that was like my first thought yeah. of how can I get him into my side. I sent a trade um, to I sent a trade to Mussy involving Cream Hunt. Didn't accept or reject. Don't think he's checked his team in three weeks, unfortunately. But... Nah, he has because he lit me off. Oh. <laughs> he, he was lifting me off about my record and he was saying like he was surprised that his team is doing well which is uh, yeah so at least he's checking um but my running back riser of the week is joey mixon um, yeah this one thanks for, thanks for leaving me the early uh the easy option um because you're a lot more on the ball um pardon the pardon the title job but you're a lot more on the ball in fantasy at the moment um, but yeah, Joey Mixon. Look, I think was he. I'm assuming he was the top scorer of the round. He put up like yep. 45. I copped him against me, which is <laughs> what we love to see. Uh, to those listening, I'm 0 4. I haven't scored many points, to be honest. I think I'm sitting in eighth out of ten in points four. So I, I, I only have myself to blame. But I have copped the most points against. So not too happy about it. And I've copped quite a few injuries, but a lot, of, a lot of us have. Um, But yeah, Joey Mixon, 151 rushing yards, 25 carries, which makes it just over six yards per carry, two rushing TDs. And then in the air, he went six um, receptions from six targets, 30 yards and a receiving touchdown. So pretty much everything the Bengals did um, went through him. And sadly, Pilch, did you trade him after week one or week two or something like that? Yeah, after week one, I was very happy about it, but woke up and saw that was quite... um... Upset about that, but yeah, it's can you ever be happy with fantasy? I don't think you can. (laughs) Man, I'm not gonna lie; it causes some serious unneeded stress at times. But um, like your team can put out 150, and you'll see this bike you traded away got 30. You just be you just hate life for the week, and you you probably should just accept that you did well. But that's it's so unlucky for you to cop the one week he does that because it was only a matter of time until he versed a shit defense, but. The fact that you yeah. popped that week, but yeah, he just yeah, he's he's completely reliant on game script and versing a shit defense. Yeah, it's getting a bit frustrating. But I haven't looked at his fixture or anything. But if they've got some easy games coming up, get him in your side. Um, Faller of the week. Who have you gone? Faller of the week for running backs. Uh, there was an obvious one who I assume you've gone for. Um, I think you have him, but um, I went for Clyde Edwards Alaire actually. Um, pretty much because the majority of the reason why I and many others drafted him so highly was the touchdown upside in that Kansas offense. And through four weeks, he's only scored one touchdown, which is a bit worrying. He has played the Chargers, Ravens, and Patriots, who are all very good run defenses, but. You, you can't really not be worried about the fact he scored one touchdown so far. Yeah. Todd Gurley for, um, Todd Gurley for Clyde. Just a little on our <laughs> trade. Yeah. Probably, probably reject that one. I'd probably rather uh, Montgomery yeah. over, over, uh, Todd Marshall. Yeah. I actually need to trade away Toddy cause, um, I hate him and <laughs> nah, <laughs> jokes. But I hate like, him as well. didn't he put up 19 and he scored two touchdowns? Like yeah. his base level, is so bad. Not going to lie, I was salty about that because Matt Ryan drove them all the way up the field and then he just handed it off to Gurley yeah. on the two-yard line. And he, but, like, James Robinson's he's also on that side and he gets the same amount of points as Gurley um, when Gurley scores two d- TDs yeah. and he gets nothing. So I, I'm all about volume and I'm not liking Gurley's baseline points at the moment, even though he's getting volume. So I kind of contradict myself there. But my other, the main four of the week, my other, my RB1, yeah. Um. Did I draw? I d- drafted him in the second round. Um. It was Jeez. pick pick nineteen, so it was a low ender. Um. But yeah, I was very high on him. To those who watched our NFL fantasy preview um video podcast video series, so feel free to go back listen and watch those. They're pretty good. Um. But yeah, I had him up at about fourth position. Um. And it has bit me on the bum. Uh, Breeze and Drake were my two big. Guy and Cook actually, all three of them. I had them way higher than the average, and let's just say the average has outsmarted me there because um, Drake has been pretty bloody bad. Um, Thirty-five yards from thirteen carries on the weekend, no receiving work, 
every week his stock is just getting a little bit lower and lower. And at this point, I don't even think I could get, you know, a small chips from KFC for him. <laughs> <laughs> he left the game with an injury. Chase Edmonds reportedly looked good when he came in. Um, yeah, that, and, that's worrying, I must say. And it was also against the fifth worst rushing defense in terms of fantasy points um, in the league. So, yeah, look, I've lost all respect for him as a person and a, and a footballer. Um, probably will never talk to him, message him, get him on fantasy ever again. I don't respect him um, yet, but I'm pretty mad about it because it's just a little bit frustrating when you go on a limb and you make yeah. a bold prediction and it just, you know, the egg egg splits on your face. So, yeah, yeah it's, not happy with it. It's not a good feeling, but um, a lot of the reason I think is due to Kyler Murray. I think he's dogging him hard by stealing his touchdowns and not dumping Bit of a Mark him. Ingram. Bit of a Mark Ingram. Um, situation here yep. from last year. Yeah, Kyler um, Murray doesn't even look at him. He just tr- runs at himself. When he yeah, what they him. should do, they should play like a rugby play. Like Kyler Murray should come <laughs> in and draw and pass, get him out wide. Can you drag steam down the wing? I could see Off-load it. it. <laughs> yeah. Someone tried to do People that. People do that. And, I'm no, the Chargers tried to do it on the last play. Um, I think I think Allen did it to Eckler or something. He just caught it and just dumped it off. Oh, I we, it was the last play. Yeah, the last yeah, yeah, play. Yeah. And it would have been a touchdown. He dropped it. Um, I think Lamar tried to do it as well the other week. He just did a side pass, which I, I think they need to get it more involved. Um, before we move on to the wide receivers, do you have a running back of the week? or is it? Yeah, uh, Joe Mixon by, yeah, by an absolute yeah. mile. Three yeah, he picked, up, he picked up the 10 votes for me. Who else, who else was up there? My second was Cookie. Third he was looks- Melbourne. Delvin Cook just quietly looks beast. Ben How's Lee. he doing it? He's not even getting I that much, like t- many touches. Like, no, I, think, I think he's just a freak. Like I've yeah. I've come to realize. But anyway, continue the top five. Uh no, I just said my top three. So oh, who Cook's was third again? Cook second and Melvin. Um, oh, Melvin. He had over a hundred yards against the Jets, I think, and a, and two TDs as well. Jets um, are they, decent as well against the run. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are. They're actually quite a pretty good defense. Um, and then Latavius Murray was up there as well, which was a bit of a shocker to see. Um, might might mean, um, yeah. even though he's been doing well, might mean Alvin Kamara is a bit of a faller. But What's this always happens. Murray just randomly comes out, scores touchdowns, and you think, oh, no, Kamara is going to stop rushing. And then next week it's just back to normal. Yeah, but like, the thing is, every week they pretty much split um, carries. And I actually don't yeah. understand it. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, but Latavius Murray should leave. Like, he is a dead set RB1. Like, he used to be a beast in Minnesota yeah. Um, yeah. like three years ago. Imagine um, Kamara, yeah. though, without him. He'd average about 60. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> moving into the wide receiver position, um, first of all, wide receiver of the week. Yep. Who are you, you going to give it to? Um, I, yeah, I thought about giving it to one of my men but I decided against it because he kind of costed a late interception. Uh, that's Amari Cooper. So I gave it to Terry McLaurin. Um, yeah. I think he had like 11 for 100 yards or something, but against yeah. the Ravens and the man yeah. was a beast. Like genuine Dwayne beast. Haskins throwing. He had 10 receptions, 118 yards. Pretty impressive. Mate, he's so good. McLaurin. Yeah, my, my wide receiver of the week was DJ Chark. Um, so oh, two yeah, young, yeah. two young fellas. Um, didn't have the most yards going around, but ninety-five yards, two touchdowns. He had eight uh, receptions from nine targets. Um, it was against the Bengals, but their defense has been quite decent this year. Actually, um, they've only allowed two TDs to wide receivers. Um, going into week four, and he put up to himself. So, um, yeah, the Jaguars' offense just looks like a different beast when he's in there. Um, him and Minshew obviously just have great chemistry. So, um, yeah, he was my wide receiver of the week. But, yeah, you t- talked about him. My w- wide receiver riser was Terry McLaurin. Um, 10 receptions, but more importantly for me, 14 targets and no TDs. I love the big targets. I don't care about TDs. Yeah, I'm I just same. want bulk touches, bit of A-Rob action like today against the Bucks. Um, 118 yards. And as you said, it was against the Ravens. Um in his next five matches, he does have a tough one this week, so I might wait till after this one because he has Jalen Ramsey. Um, but then after this, he's got the Giants, the Cowboys, the Giants, the Lions, who are like 
all bottom 10 wide receivers in terms of fantasy points. So, um, and also, I have, um, what's his name though? That shadow cornerback from the Panthers. Yeah. What is his name? Shaq uh, Thompson. Bradbury. Bradbury. Oh, yeah. Dance Bradbury. Dance Bradbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I he's been I mean, playing pretty well. the linebacker. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, and it, Haskins has been dropped for Kyle Allen. Yeah. So Are you I dropping do, he, he threw three over 300 yards and not, didn't throw a pick. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't see his stats from the weekend. I just like, we're talking like career best one. game and he's been dropped, oh, which is that's actually strange. Quite I weird. don't think Rivera ever liked him, though. Yeah. Um, he's clearly he shit. But... From all reports, he never really rated him. Um, but yeah, Kyle Allen. He came into the Panthers last year and he had a few good games early. Then he kind of peed it away. But I don't know. I think a lot, a lot, a lot of the times when a quarterback comes in, they just target the wide receiver one just nonstop. So hoping that's a bit of action for Scary Terry. Um, but yeah, I would probably, for those listening, if you are looking at Terry, I'd probably hold off this week um, and see how Allen goes as well. Um, against a fairly good Rams defense and then ass- assess the situation there. But he is definitely rising. His stock's looking good. Yep. Um, who's your riser? Um, yeah, there were a lot to choose from, I thought, in the wide receivers. McLaurin was one of them, but I actually gave mine to Devontae Parker from the Dolphins. Um, uh, 12, 12 targets, 10 receptions, 110 yards, similar with Terry McLaurin. And he just looks, he's, he had a few, he, I think he was dealing with a hammy for the first three weeks, but he's shaken it. And now he just looks exactly what he did in the second half of last season, which I believe he was a top eight wide receiver through that portion of time. So he, he looks back to his best. And I'd probably, I'd have him in that top 15, pushing for that top 15 range um, after seeing that. Yeah, no, I, I was pretty big on him, I think, in the preseason. I can't remember exactly, but I think he might... Did he get injured in the preseason or something? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Parker. Have, yeah. Um, yeah, no, i definitely rate those two. Terry and Parker, I wouldn't mind that wide receiver combo. Um, at least they get on the park. Um, AJ Brown, Julio, I hope you think. <laughs> the absolute dogs, get on the field for me. Um, but my fall of the week, um, I've actually gone with two here. But it's more just a whole offense. For me, it's just the whole Atlanta offense. What I saw from that O-line is yeah. <laughs> scarred my mind. Gurley could easily have been the running back four because when you've scored two TDs and you're not even cracking 20, that's, that's you know, red flags. Uh, Matt Ryan, I've seen that O-line and now I understand, like, why that offense was having trouble last year because it's just, it's, just yeah. poor, it's just poor stuff. So he was almost a fuller for me as well. Um, but yeah, I've gone Ridley and Russell Gage. Um, Ridley chucked up a goose egg, five targets, I think, or maybe six targets, zero receptions. <laughs> did, you <laughs> like, see the, uh, did you see the last play? The one at the very yeah, end? Yeah, when he was yeah. like, <laughs> doing no, 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 yeah. there was that oh, one. But then the, the last play, Ryan hit him, up, hit him up in the end zone and Ridley dropped it. <laughs> Oh <laughs> no! I saw the one where um, Ryan's looking that way, and then yeah, I saw he's out to the left, and he's just doing this. That was a gag. He was he was in ten meet, ten square meters of spa- open space. Ryan, yeah, you could have seen him on that one. Yeah, but it's like it's not like he just wasn't looking at him. He had six targets or whatever. So yeah, um, I'm more worried about that because you know Julio's out. The Packers they've got a good defense, but you'd expect him to have been the main man on the night and they would have just peppered him. So I'd be a little bit worried about that. But at the same time, could also be a buy low situation with Ridley um, because I think a lot of owners were pretty mad at him. But yeah, then Gage as well. He only had two touches. Um, and I thought similarly because Julio was out once again. And if you thought Julio was out, Ridley's not going to get a touch. You'd think, oh, Gage is going to go big after a first big couple of weeks of the season. But no. Um, they decided to get around Randos. Um, Zacchaeus, I, I think he's yeah, that is. yeah, that's that's his name, Zacchaeus. <laughs> but yeah, um, they're my two fallers. But once again, well, Gage, um, yeah, definitely a faller. Gage, like I think if he's on a roster, he could be dropped um, this week in fantasy. Ridley, he's a faller, but it's more just because I think his rating was so high going into the week. Like yeah. I think he was legit almost getting to wide receiver one territory. Yeah. Um, with um, Julio and Thomas injured. So, yeah, not too bad on Ridley. Like, I don't think sell him yet. Um, 
but yeah, if you don't have it, maybe have a crack at him because owners might be pissed off at him. I was um, considering yeah. uh I was considering offering Curtis Amari Cooper for Ridley, but considering Dak Prescott's throwing it sixty five times a game, I'd probably rather stick with Amari. Yeah, I would I would offer him something, but none of mine plays. <laughs> <laughs> and Thielen, Thielen's the wide receiver three. So, yeah. hey, Thielen, Thielen's uh, kind of balling out, but then he's also chugging up goose eggs. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. My my wide receiver faller, faller. my wide receiver faller of the week. He's been falling pretty much every week, but um, it's getting really worrying now. DJ Moore of the Panthers. Robbie Anderson is pretty much confirmed as the alpha of the offense now in terms of the receiving corpse. And I've, I still find it quite surprising, but, I mean, maybe he and Bridgewater just hit off a connection in the preseason and he just likes throwing a Robbie. But, yeah, DJ Moore's quite worrying. Uh, four, four catches, 49 yards on the weekend, eight points, not what you want to see. Still very talented, though, so he could turn it around, but I'd be worried. Yeah, all these fallers, especially in the wide receiver category, they're all, you know, they're all an inch off a buy low situation. <laughs> yeah. um, not so much the running back and the quarterbacks, but yeah, it's like a, it's a tough one to judge the wide receivers. But who's got DJ Moore in our league? That this is Tyler, such a relevant Tyler. question for the listeners. But uh, okay, I thought it was my old brother. I was happy about that. But yeah, uh, all right. He has Robinson, who's born. Yeah. All right, T- tight ends. I, I haven't done this section because I was running a bit late. Um, you know, went, went for some beach sprints in the afternoon <laughs> rather than researching my tight ends. But who are you, who's your tight end of the week, firstly? is it? It's got to be one man, doesn't it? Well, it was actually two men. I had oh. George Kittle. I did give it to George Kittle with yeah. his 15 receptions. 15 guys. receptions, I think 42 or 40, 40 fantasy points. But um, Robert Tonyan. Of the Packers, oh yeah, three touchdowns, <laughs> three touchdowns, and I think thirty-five or so fantasy points. Who is he? Who is he? I actually don't know. Like a dead like, set in between the plays, A Rod's going to Mike, uh, not Mike McCarthy, uh, Matt Lafleur going like, wait, what's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> Where did he come from? Like, it's, mate, genuine. I'm, I was not copping it. Oh, it was pretty funny though. Like you just know he'll be serving up a zero next week. <laughs> yeah, every, I bet he got bought by so many people as well. Yeah, Tyler. Uh, Tyler picked him up. On the, is Adams going to play? Do you um, know? Oh, don't they have a buy or something? Oh yeah, they're on the buy this week. Yeah, Adam, Adams. Adams yeah. will definitely play. And yeah, um, so. I looked up Lazard before, and he's due back soon, apparently. So uh, okay, beautiful. Uh, yeah, the the new IR rule of you can be on IR and be, only be out for three weeks is kind of like confusing. Yeah. Because you, you see that and you panic, but um, yeah. all right. Who's your tight end? Oh, by the way, I saw some stat. It was like Kittle had the most tight end receiving yards against the Eagles since nineteen forty eight. It's like the Gee. most random stat. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, he, um, looked, he looked very good. Who's your tight end riser? So uh, I should listen into this one. <laughs> you need tight ends and. This bloke, you should probably try and trade for this bloke because he's not on someone's field. But Dalton Schultz of the Cowboys, playing on, he played on eighty six percent of the snaps, and he looks he looks a big part of the offense. And Dak Prescott's throwing it five hundred yards a game, sixty times. He's going to get volume, so I mean, he's probably he's probably he's definitely in that tight end one range. I would say um, eighty yards and a touchdown on the weekend, and should continue to produce good numbers. Yeah, definitely you should have a look at him. He's obviously benefiting from um, Blake Jarwin's ACL, I think it was. Um, yeah. But yeah, to those listening, my tight end situation right now is Jared Cook and Austin Hooper. So you, you love to see it. Both out, probably outside the top 10, one's injured. Didn't um, Hooper do all right? I love yeah, it. I needed yeah. him last week and he actually, uh, I don't know what he got, but I think he got something decent. Um, he so got I was proud of him, didn't he? Yeah, I think they were versing. Well, they've scored forty nine points, so I think everyone got a touchdown. But true, yeah, I appreciate it from Baker G Mayfield. Um, who's your tight end faller? By the way, are, is risers and fallers like good good names, or should yeah. we think of something? I, else? I rate it. Right, okay. like, right, yeah, rising in value. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, this one's kind of kind of obvious, but Zach Ertz. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure it's getting to the point where it's safe to say that he stinks now, and he's. He's washed up past his prime. Finally got a game without Dallas Goddard competing for touches and he put up four receptions for nine yards. 
So <laughs> it's, not, it's not looking good for Ertzos. I was actually considering, after hearing the got it injury, I was considering sending Darren Waller for Zach Ertz. And if I had have done that, I probably would have deleted my fantasy team upon yeah. backing up to that score. But yeah, not looking good for Ertzos. And he yeah, looked yeah. happy as well. Yeah, speaking of tight ends, Mr. Mr. Rob Gonkowski um, tickled my fancy this morning. <laughs> Every time, like Brady was getting pissed off, and as soon as he'd get pissed off, he'd just go to his comfort zone. Um, so might have a look at that one next week. But um, that match has already obviously happened this week. All right, that, that finishes us off for the fantasy um, chat. To wrap us off, things to watch out for the, um, week five of the NFL. Um, I'll start us off. Mine is how bad are the Falcons actually? Um, they're playing the Carolina Panthers, and look, I think at this point playoffs are pretty much gone. I think, yeah. I think um, there's all these stats about zero and two and zero and three, but I think they're a little bit um, like ridiculous because I think fixtures comes into it a lot. But zero and four is a different beast. I think zero and four you're pretty cooked from there. Um, but yeah, if they lose to the Panthers this week, then it's not a case of are they missing playoffs. It's a it's a more of a case of like is Dan Quinn making it to week six? Um, it's a case of I think. it's a case of whether or not to go into tank mode if they yeah <laughs> if they lose this week yeah so I think it's a huge game for them um, and the Panthers come into it with no pressure um, if they win it's a great win and all of a sudden they're three and two um, so yeah all the pressures on the Falcons they've been putting up points and against the Panthers defense it's not bad but it's not great um, they should be able to do it. And if they don't, they're going to have a lot of um, time to think um, over <laughs> in in January next year. Um, but yeah, what what else are you looking out for this week? Yep. So that was pretty much the same as one of mine. Um, oh, can the can can the Falcons get their first win of the season? Um, I'll go with uh, what is Michael Thomas's true impact on the Saints' offense? I believe he's going to be back this week. Um, there's a chance he might miss again. But if he is back and they click again and become beast again, then we know how good he really is. And if not, then I'd be worried as a Saints fan going forwards. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what, what's their record right now? Are they 2-2, two and two, I think? So. Yeah, 2-2, two and two, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if they can rest him really, can they? Because um, they do have the bye week six. So normally you would say, like Devante Adams last week, rest him, then he's got he's had a month off. Are they playing the char- uh No, not the Chargers. Oh, I don't know who the Saints are playing, to be honest. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Um, but, yeah, I've gone. That, that'll that be an interesting one to look out for if he does play and if he does, how oh, it, it does he go. Oh, okay, so that'll be an interesting one. Even if he doesn't play, that'll be an interesting one to see how many points they can score against the Chargers defense that is yeah. um, looking pretty solid. Um, mine is what's worse, the Giants offense or the Cowboys defense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually Giants versus one. Cowboys. I just don't know what's going to happen in this match. I'm pretty confident the Cowboys will win overall, but I, I'm actually interested to see how many points the Giants score. Um, they haven't cracked double digits in two weeks in a row, if I'm not mistaken. I think they've put up nine against the Niners and um, the Rams last week. Um, and now they're up against one of the worst defences in the comp. So it's just going to be interesting to see which one's worse. Uh, yeah, that's so actually, I, I don't know. I actually have, couldn't, couldn't predict what will happen there on that side of the ball. I don't yeah. know. That's one of the games where I'm most looking forward to seeing the outcome of this week. I, yeah, it I could be... It, I think the uh, the Giants' defense might win over, and it might be a grind for the Cowboys. But I think they'll get up either way. Yeah, it's a good matchup because like both teams' best side is like against each other, as you said. Their their defense is pretty decent. New York. Um, what's your other? What else are you looking out for? Um, my last one was the uh, the mainly the Titans, but the COVID the COVID situation. Oh, yeah, that is true. Going forward, bit of an obvious one, but um, basically just praying that. They sort it out and the season doesn't get cancelled. Um, but yeah, not it's pretty worrying for the Titans because pretty sure like 12 of their players or something like that have it. So I don't know how good the players are, but <laughs> it's probably <laughs> some, well, some fantasy prospects. Yeah, anyway. Thanks to I COVID. Think, um, uh, Corey Davis has it, I'm pretty Yeah, sure. he got it. 
and like I think three of their receivers have it or something. So yeah, I don't know who's going to play for them. Um, but yeah, I think also something to watch out for that is if there's any suspensions handed out because apparently the Titans went out like twelve of them or something. They went to some local um, high school gym and worked out together, and it was like. Like you weren't the gym wasn't even open and they're not meant to be together. So I'm like it'll be interesting interesting to see if there's any suspensions or if they just stick to fines. Um, finally, I'm going Colts versus Browns. This applies to both teams. Are they pretenders or contenders? Um, for not for the Super Bowl, probably just for playoffs. Um, but yeah, interesting to see both teams three and one. Both teams looking pretty good. The Colts' defense looks like the best in the competition at the moment. Yeah. And the Browns just put up 49 points. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Um, but, yeah, it will be interesting to see who wins this that one. If I had to put my money on someone, I'd probably go the Colts. Um, would you go lean the same way there or would you like the Browns in that one? It is in Cleveland, which if it was a neutral like venue, I'd take the Colts. I'd probably still take the Colts, though, even though it's in yeah. Cleveland. Their defense yeah, I just think, yeah, I just think... Baker Mayfield's not good enough yet yeah. to overcome a good defense, and they because they might struggle to run the ball a lot more than usual, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, what do we do now?" Baker can't hit a target, so yeah. Odell Beckham is actually pretty good at throwing, and Jarvis Landry, so yeah, <laughs> he's might, doing an absolute dime to yeah. So they might share around the passing duties, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if um if the Colts stop the Browns' uh, run game, then they'll win. But Philip Rivers is trash. As well as Mayfield, yeah, that that is uh, that is a good point. Yeah, but like honestly, whoever wins this, they're playoff. firming very strongly for playoffs. Yeah. Um, the Colts, if they win this, you'd think they're the strong favorite to win that um that division, the AFC South. And if the Browns win, you think they're likely to wrap up an AFC wild card spot. Which, um, in my so, yeah. opinion, is gross. Uh, one of these two teams being four and one, not as gross as the Bears, but. Still gross. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not a nice sight. So yeah, that's all the things I'm looking out for this week. Um, but yeah, very very happy to be announcing that we'll be doing a weekly NFL thing. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, same actually. Um, get it's it's fun to do episodes of the things you're actually like passionate about. So, um, we'll we'll have a little have a little brainstorm this week. See if we can streamline the episode, make it more entertaining. But I think this structure went pretty decently. Um, but yeah, if you've got to this point, thanks for listening. Let us know what you think of the episode. If you have any suggestions or any feedback, um, and yet yeah, like subscribe, rate review, all that good stuff. Thanks for listening. And thanks for joining me, Pilch. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. See ya. <laughs>